My array command creates multiple copies of objects in a pattern. You can create objects in a rectangular pattern, which will copy them into uh, rows and columns. Or you can copy objects into a polar array, which will copy them in a circle about a center point. Let's start by looking at a rectangular array. In this example, the array consists of this 2 inch by 1 inch rectangle. The array was built from the lower left hand corner and so these objects are created in a positive direction on the X and the Y. This uh, array is made up of three columns and two rows. The other thing I need to know before I start building the array is I need to know the length of the object that distance and how much space I want to leave in between on both the X and the Y vector of my rectangular array. In this case my object is 2 inches long and my space in between I want to be 1 inch so that makes a total of 3 inches on the X. On the Y vector my object is 1 inch tall and I want a 1 inch space so that makes a total of 2. I can start the array command by picking it from the flyout menu on my tool panel. I can type from the keyboard array or I can use its keyboard shortcut AR which brings up my array dialog box. I have to choose that I'm making a rectangular array and select the objects that I want to be arrayed. When I'm done selecting, I hit enter, brings back my dialog box, and now I can enter how many rows and columns that I want. In this case, we said uh, that we wanted two rows, and you can see a preview of what's being built with your input right here, and I wanted three columns, and that looks correct you can see that with both of these numbers being positive it's going in a positive X and Y direction. Then I can enter the information directly so the row offset would be along the Y vector so I, I said that I needed two there and the column offset is along the X vector so that, it, that would be uh, three and I can preview down here. I can see that I'm going to be, because these numbers are positive, I'm building in the positive direction and I can preview what I'm going to get. And then if I hit escape, I can go back and edit it or hit enter to accept it. Let's look at, at some other ways that we have of choosing. Now I can uh, pick my row offset one at a time uh, on the screen. So I'm going to click here and it says uh, pick the specified distance between the rows. So I can do that by uh, here I have a, a object snap tracking. Um, I'm tracking at 90 degrees. I'm going to say 2 and enter and that puts that into the box. I could say pick my column offset. I can click on a base point and I could track or I could snap to another object or use whatever uh, acquisition method I wanted to to put in this information. The other option I have is to do both at once and by that I will be drawing a rectangle down here at my start point. I will be drawing a rectangle that will represent the offset in both directions. Now this is a diagonal. I'm going to use some object snap tracking from these uh, points that I already have down here. and click and that brings it in for me. So I'm going to go ahead and preview again. It looks good. I'll hit enter and say OK and I've accepted this array. Now I have one other option for my array command that we didn't look at so I'm going to activate it again. Uh, notice that it remembers the information that I used last time. I just need to select objects again and I have the same array information except for the angle of the array. Now I can enter this directly into the box, so let's say a 30 degree angle and preview. And you'll notice that the
the angle would be on a line that would connect each of these lower left corner points, which would be the points that make up the array. I can also enter an angle by uh, picking an angle on the screen. So here I could pick it either by snapping to another object or I could use my, here's a 45 degree, uh, my polar snap tracking. I'll go ahead and choose that and say OK and now that's arrayed at a 45 degree angle. Next we're going to look at the polar array and in this example I'm using the same 1 inch by 2 inch uh, rectangle. This rectangle has been arrayed about this center point at a distance of 1 inch away and is 360 degrees around. I have six total objects. I'll start an array command and this time I'm going to choose polar. First I need to select objects, so I'll select this object. And then the center point that I'm going to use. Now I could snap to an object to use as a center point, or in this case I'm going to uh, use the midpoint and I'm going to track uh, about one inch over in this direction and hit enter. And that's found the location for me. Now my method down here it says total number of items and the angle to fill. We want a total of six items and you count the item that was already drawn as being one of your total items. And angle to fill 360 degrees and we can preview that to see what it's going to look like. I get a, a preview here in this box but let's see what our preview. So the objects are rotated and you notice that the object has been turned as it was rotated. That was because rotate items as copied was checked. You can see in this little preview what happens when that's unchecked. Let's take a look and see what happens in our uh, situation when we uncheck that and preview. Now you'll notice that that doesn't look even. It's rotated around. It's one inch away, but it's not. it doesn't look like a perfectly round circle. And the reason for that is that the base point of our array is always considered to be the lower left corner of the object when I choose the object. So let's look at how we could um, make some changes to help that out. On my More uh, Flyout menu, I can set the, the base point that's going to be used and uh, I'm going to unclick the take the default and this time we're going to choose what's going to be used as a base point and what I'm going to do is use some tracking to find the center point of our rectangle and there I've tracked to that point so I'm going to click and let's preview and see what, ha what it looks like now and while I probably should have had a larger amount in between because these are right against each other you can see that it is arrayed evenly because it's using the center of the, of the rectangle as its base point for the array. Let's look at some of our other options that we have. Um, I'm going to switch back to the default and turn on rotate. I have a total number of items in the angle between the items. So if I choose this one I can choose total number of items, so let's say that I want four, and the angle between them as they're rotated around. So let's say that we want 30 degrees between them. We can preview and see that the actual angle uh, is, is locked in. And you'll also see that I'm rotating in a counterclockwise direction. So, because this was my object, it is rotating in this direction. We'll go back and look at the, uh, another uh, option that we have is the angle to fill and angle between items. So, right now I'm at 90 degrees. 
I could say that I wanted to fill 180 degrees, that's halfway around, and if I have 30 degrees it's automatically choosing seven items. If I had 20 degrees, let's preview that. If I put in less degrees, I'm going to get more objects. You can also, on the screen, pick the fill angles that you wanted to have. I'm going to set this back to total number of items being 6, to fill at 360, and we'll say OK. And that takes care of our array command.